Okay, welcome back. So today we're finally gonna get to the installation of the Transgo HD2 kit. Basically just a shift kit. It increases the firmness and it also comes in this nice blue little capsule. Increase your firmness. So that's what we like to hear, so let's get to it. There's a few different ways you can install this kit. You can install the kit with the transmission still in the vehicle, which is pretty cool. And you can install it with the transmission out of the vehicle. There's also some additional parts you can add if you have the transmission disassembled. In my situation, I'm doing a rebuild on the transmission, so I'm gonna add the extra part. There's a thicker, larger snap ring for the intermediate snap ring, and there's some stronger springs for the direct drum. So I'll show you that stuff. Don't feel like you have to use it. You can do it without those things. If you're not doing a rebuild and you don't have the transmission out of the vehicle, I wouldn't say it's really worth it to take the transmission completely apart to install a snap ring and different springs, but I'll show you both steps. Before we get started, let's take a look at the kit. So here's the kit. Comes in this nice little box imported from your neighbor's house in the good old US of A. Comes with some instructions several pages very nicely detailed if you don't know how to read it comes with pictures so I'll be using those a lot do have a few gaskets that are going to go around the valve body plate a couple springs accumulator springs drill bits a little bit of a relief plate I believe that is Some more gaskets boost valve boost valve sleeve all kinds of goodies. Don't forget about underneath. Comes with a new plate, and then it also comes with a intermediate snap ring, which I already installed in the transmission, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so for this project, you are going to need to remove the valve body, so that requires removal of the fluid, so you have to drain the fluid, remove the oil pan, remove the valve body. I'll insert a clip here now of doing that. You got a couple uh, electronic items here. We have a, a couple solenoids. First thing I'm gonna do is go through and and undo all these bolts here. There is a whole bunch of 10 millimeter bolts and then there is some um, eight millimeter bolts on top of this pressure switch assembly. I'm gonna go through right now and unbolt all these. So this pressure switch assembly, uh, we'll undo the plug here. Just pull in on these little clippies, pull them out. And then we're gonna wanna twist this right here and then it'll, it'll break free. We'll go ahead and remove the wiring harness. This is the A solenoid plug. This is the B solenoid plug. I already have them unclipped, but uh, this one is the torque converter clutch. And here is the pressure control. So I'm gonna pull this off to the side. We can hang it off to the side like this. So one thing to watch out for is this unit here actually has a little pin that catches onto this valve. This is your manual valve for the valve body. This is what's basically making the selection and changing the, the hydraulic fluid passages inside based on the, the gear position. So now that we have all of the bolts out, I'm going to lift up this valve body and make sure that it's gonna come out. So next there's gonna be eight little check balls in here. There's one here, one here, 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 and here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna use a little uh, Neo magnet, and I'm just gonna go through and uh, pull all of these check balls out of here. Okay, so now that we have the valve body completely removed, third and fourth accumulator springs and the plate, everything already gone, we're gonna focus on this section right here. So this section of the plate, we're looking at this hole. We're basically gonna be taking this section right here and drilling a hole. We're gonna start with a 1 8 hole and then we're gonna move up to a 3 16 All right, so we're gonna start by doing a little center punch. Punch a hole, I'm just using a nail. I'm not that fancy. And to protect the valve body, I just wrapped some tape around the bit. So now we're all the way through there. And we'll open it up to the 3 16 Next, I'm just gonna go through and clean all these metal shavings out. All right, next we're gonna be taking out this roll pin right here. For this plug, we're gonna remove this pin and that plug. Pop that pin out, and then this should come out. See, we have a, a solid plug, a 
spring. And then we have this valve. So just as this comes out, we have the pin, plug, spring, and valve. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be replacing this spring and this plug. New plug with the O-ring, and I'm gonna use the small blue spring. So we'll take the old pieces out, put the valve in, spring in, and then we'll go ahead and put the plug in. And after the plug is all the way in, go ahead and insert this roll pin. I'll just tap it down, make sure it's flush. Next, we're gonna be removing this plug and this filter assembly over here. I'm going to remove this roll pin so we can get the plug out. I'll remove this manual valve on this side so I can come in from the other side with a long screwdriver. I'll give this thing some taps. And launch everything across the room. So now that that's out, I'm gonna go ahead and put the manual valve back in. So what we're gonna be putting back in from the kit is this new plug here. It's kind of tapered on this end, has the O-ring on it. So that's gonna go in first. This is the old filter. We're gonna remove this O-ring. I actually have a new one from my rebuild kit, but you're gonna go ahead and remove this O-ring. This doesn't have one on there, so I'm just gonna leave it like it is. So it says in the instructions you may have to grind this thing down a little bit, which I actually did. You can see it just took some sandpaper on the floor and ground that down so it's a little bit smaller. We use the orange spring from the kit. This is going to go in this way. And we're going to use this new plug from the kit. It has a hole in it. All right, so after you get the filter, the plug, and the spring in there, you can take the other roll pin, drop it in through the top. Tap it down until it's flush. So next we're gonna take it and flip it over this way. Step four says to take this plate. We're gonna use these two holes here. Install this plate over these holes. It says to use two valve body bolts. Run them through the hole. And then there's two nuts that come with the kit. I'm gonna run these nuts onto the bolts. I'm gonna use this plate as a guide. Use a 3 16 bit and drill a hole straight through the valve body. And you can see the hole that we just drilled came through right inside the center of this hole where we drilled in before over here. The second hole we drilled just came through this pocket. Okay, next step is this little pin here with the yellow spring. I'm gonna take the yellow spring, push this through, and then put this little E-clip on there. Then that piece is done. We'll set that aside for later. Right, next, you're gonna have to drill some holes in this plate. There's a hole here, hole here, and then a hole right here. Make sure you reference the instructions for this one because they're pretty specific. So there's three different sizes that you can drill. You can drill all the way up to 1 8 for different firmnesses and shifting and for off-road use. So I drilled mine to 0.96. That's supposed to be considered a firm shift. So I already have mine drilled, but basically you have a hole right here, right there, and right here. Next is the third accumulator spring. It's gonna be this white spring. You pull this off, your third and fourth accumulator. This is how it's coming off. So you can reference that. And replace this spring with the white spring here. So now we're starting to assemble. I'm gonna take this valve body here, the new gasket, put the gasket on. And the instructions talk about Z holes. So there's a hole right here and a hole right here. You're basically going to use those for alignment holes. And I'm gonna take the new plate. I'm gonna take two valve body bolts and line them up inside these holes, the Z holes for the alignment. So that'll prevent that from sliding around. Next, I'm gonna throw this gasket on here. And throw our third and fourth accumulator on. All 
right, now that that's done, we should be able to remove these Z-bolts and then we'll use some uh, assembly lube and stick the other gasket on. All right, this part here is another part you can do in or out of the transmission. I have the pump out of the transmission, so I'm gonna be doing it outside right now. Snap ring down here for the boost valve. See how this slides right out. This boost valve assembly sliding right out here. That should be good. So we have this little valve, purple and a white spring here, this sleeve, and this other valve. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace it with all of this stuff. So this is the only piece of this assembly that we're gonna keep. So you can see we have the new valve, new sleeve, new washer, new springs. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this all back in same way that it came out. So we'll slide the valve all the way in, put the green and the purple spring all the way in, put the washer in, washer will seat down right on the top of that green spring, take the boost valve and the sleeve assembly, and we'll drop this in, we'll slide this all the way in, basically slide this in as far as we can until we can get this snap ring on. So now this is installed, we'll push this in to get that snap ring in there, should be good to go. This was actually kind of tough. I didn't record much of it because it was actually kind of tough to do, especially with this off on the bench. So I guess if I had to do it again, I would do it with it in the transmission. It's actually quite a bit easier because when you got this lifted up like this and you're trying to push down on it, it's just trying to rotate and flip and flop around. So, And if you are doing the boost valve assembly, this is where you'll remove this down here if the pump is installed in the case. Okay, so you are also going to need to replace the reverse servo spring. So this is just going to be under here. It's this red spring. It's going to come up, come with another orange one. This is actually the one from the kit, HD2 kit. So just showing you which one it is. All right, next we're going to put the valve body back on. So I did put uh, seven of the check balls back in. This location right here is not gonna have a check ball when you put it back in. So let's leave that one out. But you'll have one here, 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 and here. And it does have a drawing in the instructions, so we'll reference that. So I'm gonna take my valve body. I did uh, use some assembly lube on the back side of this, so it's not gonna come off. It's gonna hold itself on there pretty nicely when I flip it over. So I'm just gonna flip this right over the top. Go straight down. I do need to make sure that this manual valve is inside the gear selector. This is what I'm talking about here. Make sure that manual valve is actually attached to the selector. Put my pressure switch on. Pressure switch has the eight millimeter bolts. I'm gonna start dumping in all of my 10 millimeter bolts to hold the valve body on. This little guy in there. This is that pressure relief. Valve, put my wiring back in. We have this lubrication tube back here that goes to the back. There's a little hold down bracket. This plug goes here into the pressure switch. All right, so now I'm just gonna bolt these down. This one here and then this one probably right there. So next after that, all the wiring is good. Next all I have to do is put the filter on. Take it and just twist this down and twist this into place. Now next I'll take my gasket, put it on the right way. Put my pan back on and then we're done. And then we have our intermediate snap ring. So I got two snap rings here. This is the factory snap ring, and this is the HD2 kit intermediate ring that comes with the kit. So you can see there's quite a big difference. This is the HD2 kit ring, and this is the factory ring right here. So a lot stronger. So I'm gonna toss this one aside, and we're gonna put this Beefcake HD2 kit snap ring in there. 
And this one is going to go in with the opening at the nine o'clock position, just like all of the other ones. So all three of these snap rings get placed with the opening at the nine o'clock position. All right, should be good. All right, so for this portion, we are gonna take the direct drum in this spring assembly here. This needs to be compressed down before you can get the snap ring out. And we're gonna go through and replace all of these 16 springs. So these 16 springs, let's see if we can just get them all this way. So they're coming out. Okay, so bottom plate is removed. I'm just gonna go through one by one and start to pry these springs out. Okay, so we got all the springs out now. So these are the old springs. They're a little bit thinner. These ones are thicker and shorter, but they're a lot tougher. That's about how much farther I can squeeze it just by hand. So these are a lot, a lot stronger for the HD2 kit. I'll we'll just flip it over and make sure we get everything lined up. All right, so that looks pretty good. All the tabs are inside the springs. All the springs are around that top section. So now I'll just take the rest of the drum, lay this over the top, do another little double check before I stick this thing over the top. And I'll go ahead and compress this thing and put this on. All right guys, so this is basically the process that I'm using to compress the spring to get the snap ring back in there, to compress it, to get it out, and to put it back in. So compressing this down, there you can see the snap ring just fell into place when I got it back down a little bit more. So now I will pull these clamps off. All right guys, that's it for this one and the rest of the Transmission rebuild. So the transmission is done now and the HD2 kit is installed. If you guys stuck with me through the whole series, thank you for watching. If you're new to the series or new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. There's more to come. Also working on something pretty exciting for the channel right now. Hopefully we'll see that in a couple days. Other than that, I'm going to bed. Have a good one.